Welcome to the call. This is our last of uh, three sessions on money and prosperity magic. And I'd like to begin with a meditation and then we'll get going. So if you are in a place where you can do so, please close your eyes and take some very deep, slow, relaxing breaths. Begin to relax the body and the emotions and the mind. And with every inhale, you feel lighter. And with every exhale, you feel more peaceful. And we picture ourselves now on the top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. And inside the center of our circle, a bonfire blazes forth and it lights us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. And we recognize that this is the light, perfect love and perfect trust. And everything that is unlike perfect love and perfect trust now burns away easily and safely and peacefully. And we are very grateful for the time that we spend together And we dedicate this time to our own growth and prosperity. And together we say, blessed be. Okay, somehow this chime is on and it's driving me up a wall. So I think every time that somebody puts something on there, it's chiming. And I want to turn that off because it's just driving me crazy. (laughs) I don't know how to do that. Oh, well. Anyway... So, welcome. Uh, Let's open the call up for uh, questions first. So, if you have uh, any any questions or comments, just go ahead and unmute yourself, and we'll start with that before we move on. Anything about the first two weeks? Anything about your your daily practice? Your goals? Any of the, the prosperity magic, the, the laws of money, any of that stuff that's not making sense that I can help you with? Ariel? Yes. This is Pandora. Hi. Hi. My question is about the, the spirit contract. Okay. I'm having a difficult time with that. You, mean, you know that, you, you know that's, that's, uh, that's not... That's that's just optional. I, I just put that because some people can relate to it and others can't. So if so, I, that was not a part of your homework. I just gave you that as something extra if you wanted to play with that. Okay. So to, so that understanding will come to me when it should. If you want to, some people never are into that. Some people will um, respond well to making an agreement like that between themselves and spirit because it it seem, it. it it, um, it, it's something that, that certain people respond well to and other people don't. So that's why I put it in as an optional thing. Uh, it's not necessary, but some people find it's very um, powerful to do that. What is your problem with it? Well, I guess the part, uh, probably the part where, um, you know, what I will do to uh, uh, reach a closer bond maybe with spirit uh-huh. is that something that's going to come over time with the practice or well it- what do you think that you could do to become more in touch with your own spiritual essence on a daily basis that you're not doing okay so that's something that i need to look at yeah i mean there's usually if you, if you just think about it even even on a surface level there's always something that we could be doing you could be doing more meditating or you could be doing more you know, spiritual purification. You could maybe even do something more pragmatically, like, um, you know, cleaning out your altar. <laughs> I mean, there's always something you could do right. to, you know, okay, to. You. Sure, sure, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Anybody else have a question or comment? And again, that that is not necessary. That that thing. 
if you're not into into the spirit contract, don't worry about it. You don't have to do it. Sorry, go ahead. Somebody had a question. Hi, Ariel. This is Willow. Hi. Leave it to me to ask the most craziest questions out of everyone. Oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> okay. So on my manifestation list, by the way, love it, love it. Um, having a fun time with it. Oh, good. Always things that I need to put on there. But remember when you said like you need to put some that are financial goals and some are things that you just need to manifest that day, but you wanted to make sure that there was one that was specifically just for fun, just for Willow. Yeah. I have a really hard time thinking of things for the just for fun, just for Willow. Mm -hmm. And then when I do, like say I put on... Uh, I lost you. Out of time, it's like, oh, well, that's the one I can do for tomorrow. Ah. <laughs> so I'm having a real hard time. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I love to, like, go to massages, but I don't do that on an everyday thing. Right. So I'm finding it hard it, to find things. It could be, it could be, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be, I'm going to take, um, you know, five minutes and have a cup of tea in the garden. It could be, I'm going to. Um, allow myself to watch my favorite TV show. It could be I'm going to read a chapter of the book that I've been wanting to read that I've been putting off. It can be something that's, you know, that's even five or ten minutes, but you definitely want to put something on there that's self-nurturing, that's something for you. And if that's something that no matter how big or small you tend to be putting off, it's a good thing to notice. It's not that, you know, there's anything wrong with you. It's it's actually pretty normal. Um, it, but if you're not allowing yourself to have some of your own pleasures on your list, then that means that you tend to like to overload yourself with a bunch of shoulds. And as a result of that, your your magic is is going to reflect that. And and so rather than you having an abundance of uh, of you know financial prosperity and and enjoyment and things that that come easily and, and naturally to you, everything's gonna everything's going to be a lot harder for you because that's how you have your life geared. That's how your deep mind is kind of programmed. That you know that willows. Willow comes last and everybody else comes first or, or you know, I, I, um, every, everything should get done except for if it's something just for me that's fun, then that should go on tomorrow. You know, that, that's then what you're telling your deep mind is, is the stuff that I want comes later and then your magic will reflect that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thanks. But oh, just so you do know, though, some of that money that you stick back for now and some for spending later. Yeah. I spent some for later, <laughs> and I did the uh, I did the uh, one that was just for me, which also turned it into achieving one of my goals. Oh, nice. Oh, sure. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Sounds like you're doing great. Good. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Good. Good job. I love it. What else? Hi, Ariel. It's Gypsy. Hi, Gypsy. How are you? I'm good. Uh, my first thing, I've been really good about keeping the mental hygiene and, and really I've been following everything as well as I possibly can. But is it typical for kind of, I've been having the opposite ex experience where it's kind of all hell's breaking loose? Mm, okay. So let's look at that. First of all, um, is that something that is normal for you when it comes time for good things in your life that you have to you have to somehow pay the price or you have to get is that normal for you or is this just this something that's that's unique to this mm, you may be on to something with it's it's normal to me i think it's uh yeah, something has to be stressful before something good comes out of it. And that's what we're really going to focus in on this week. These Actually, these next two weeks, but this is the last class. So this, this class is focusing on two more weeks of really uncovering all that stuff and gently and freely and easily switching it so that instead of there's got to be this big, heavy price to pay for me to have what I want, that actually it's okay for for whatever your thing is, it's okay for you to, you know, to, to have what you want with, you know, and, and it, and it can be easy. So, yeah. so yes, on some level, there is, there is sometimes a, what, you know, what, what in um, natural medicine can they call a, a healing crisis 
when when you're getting better, you actually it seems like a detox. It seems like it gets worse before it gets better. There is something to that, and and it's sort of natural for for some sometimes for that to happen when we, you know, if you've been eating a bunch of junk food and then all of a sudden you eat healthy, you you kind of feel icky for a few days, <laughs> you know, until until all that stuff leaves your system. So on you know on some level, no matter how how well you you you're doing you're you you can have some of that stuff but on another level it could be that you have it set up from a long time ago that sure maybe i can have something good but boy it's going to cost me a lot you know there's no such thing as a free lunch and therefore what that means is that it, it, i better pay hard you know or something like that so um, and and in, in in truth, that's not how the law of compensation works. It doesn't mean it's true. There, you can't get something for nothing. You have to you have to to um, give something to receive something. Everything has a price, but you are paying the price already by doing the work. So if you're doing the work, you deserve to have good results coming your way. And if you're having results that are are not what you want, then you then use these next next two weeks to tweak it so that you can fine tune that so that the results that you're getting are coming in more gracefully, graciously, peacefully, pleasurably, and 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 it's like changing that thought around that oh boy yeah maybe I can have something good but it's going to be awful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I totally it makes sense and. I also wanted to ask more on a practical question. Sure. I know in, in the last class, um, full moons and new moons, we weren't supposed to do any spell work. It was break days. Right. And that's still the, the same with us, especially the, the first couple days after the full moon and the day of the of the dark moon and the like maybe a day or two after. So you can move up to like right up to the full moon and end your spell there. Um, some people, some people prefer to do things like I, I don't actually work on the full moon myself. I work up to like the day before the full moon and that's my full moon. And then on the full moon itself and then the next day or two after that, I just take, I give it a break. I give it a rest. Um, some people feel more comfortable working their waxing magic all the way up to the full moon and then taking a break for a couple days. But it's definitely that, that very beginning of the waning phase that you, you want to, you want to have, um, you want to have a little bit of a, of a rest so that, but you do want to catch the waning phase right after the, the, the moon starts to, to wane. So you don't want to wait too long, but definitely avoid the dark moon. That's, that's not a good time to do magic. It's too chaotic. Also, any kind of eclipse, I, I recommend that you avoid magic on a solar or lunar eclipse, no matter what, what you what, no matter what you're thinking or your, your system is, that's extremely chaotic time. Okay, and but we are to keep continue with our meditations. Yeah, you can and and with your um, you can meditate and you can do your your manifestation list stuff like that and and, and any kind of spiritual purification stuff like that absolutely, but not actual um, raising and directing energy for specific purposes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I wrote a little bit about that in the homework today too, but it's really good to to go over that. And and what's so darn confusing is that in all the calendars it says new moon and it is dark moon. <laughs> so what they say in the astrological calendar when they say new moon, that's really the dark moon. The new moon is the first visible appearance of a crescent in the night sky. So um, that's usually one or two days after. So I always give, I usually just give it two full days just, just to be on the safe side. And plus everybody needs a break. And, and then I usually go, um, I usually take that three day orb of the full moon off. So the day before the day of, and the day after the full moon, I don't do anything. So I do a three day orb of the, um, full moon. And I usually do about a three day orb of the dark moon. And that's a good rule of thumb. The day before the, the calendar says it's a full moon, the day of the the full moon on the calendar and the day after the full moon on the calendar just don't do anything and then i do about the same thing for the for the new moon the day before what it says the new moon is which is really the dark moon the day of what it calls the new moon which we call the dark moon and then the day after so i usually take 3 days on each side of the lunar cycle off and that's usually a good rule of thumb and it's served me well and i think it's a good thing for you to 
to consider as well. Who else has a question? These headphones are so hot. <laughs> They're really good, but ah, sorry, you didn't need to know about that. Who else has a question? Nobody? It's a kind of a small class today. Well, everybody will get it on the... Either, either they are already extremely wealthy and they no longer need this class, or they're going to listen to it later. <laughs> okay. Um, so, let me get my glasses. Let's, let's look at this next um, bunch of material here. So, for the next two weeks, for the waning phase of the moon, after, after the... Um, so, you're going to finish up what you're doing right for your for your for the goal that you're working on and up until you know like uh, usually about like i said the day before the the full moon and then and then burn it and then take some time off take a few days off and then when you're ready to start the waning moon magic that we're doing this uh this next phase it doesn't matter what day of the week you started on just start it on um the um first or second day after the full moon Whatever you know, whatever you feel drawn to, just make sure you give it a day, two, two, two three days of, of a break of no magic. Um, you can do your meditations, like we said. You can do that kind of stuff, but but you don't need to um, you don't need to do any kind of um, spell work. So, what you're going to be doing is you will. Uh, after you're when you've decided you're going to start like two or three, two or three days after the full moon usually or one sometime somewhere between one and three days after the full moon just let yourself be drawn to whatever whatever works for you um, you will choose one thing from that list of things that you're wanting to eliminate that I've been asking you to complete in your journal. If you haven't done that, then you have a few days to do that. So you can do that kind of work even on the rest days. You know, when you're taking a day, uh, some rest from magic, you can still work on your goals and, and your lists and, and get your mind together as far as what, what you're going to be working. You know, there's so many people that, that work magic or what they call magic, and they have absolutely no organization they're like, well, oh, it's the, you know, it's the, the waxy moon. Oh, let's do a money spell. And <laughs> like, just, but they haven't like taken any time to like organize their thoughts, organize what they want, organize any, you know, haven't, haven't made any sort of plan or, or, or given themselves any, any map or direction. And they just kind of do this magic willy nilly. And it's, it's just not the best way to do things. You really want to be organized about this stuff. I remember my first teacher. I remember she gave me a spell to do once, and she used a. She was. It was a. There was a symbol that I was writing, and I, I was. Then I. It was like a type of candle magic, and there was this particular symbol I was drawing, and I. You know, I was probably like sixteen or seventeen, and I. I just was like, all I all I want is my spell to be done. I just wanted what I wanted, and so I just kind of wrote the symbol hastily and put the candle on it. And she just looked at it and she said, "What is this?" She said, "You know, if you're going to be doing spells, you need to take your time, and do it right, and make sure everything lines up the way it's supposed to." And and you know do it the way I showed you. Don't just don't just be messy about it. And and the and I and that was one of the best lessons I ever learned is just take your time, do it right, think it through, make sure you know what you're doing right. So before you do any magic on the waning moon, make sure you have a list of things that you want to eliminate this month. And it doesn't have to be a big list, but try to. Try to do about seven things, six or seven things if you can, um, especially things related to money, prosperity, career, anything like that, since that's what we're working on right now. And um, and some of the, you'll notice that some of the, the, the ways that I operate, you know, they, it, it bleeds over into other classes. Now, if there's a way of doing the waning magic work that, um, you prefer from the Beyond the Basics class, obviously you can do that. Um, but 
try it this way for a month, and then and then you'll you'll learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you. It's but it's very similar to what we did on, in the other class. It's just maybe not quite as quite quite. It's not quite the same. All right. So anyway, so you're gonna take you're gonna have your list, and um, when the waning moon starts and you decided to start, you're gonna be doing your spell work for seven straight days from whenever you start. So that's why I want you to have like seven things. So choose one thing that's most important to you from your elimination list and write it on the top of a sheet, clean sheet of paper. And this is going to be all in your homework. And um, then you're going to write a, a statement such as the reason I blank is. So you'll have to you'll have to modify that depending on on what you're trying to eliminate but for instance if you're trying to um if you're if you're trying to eliminate um um uh if you if you're trying to eliminate medical bills let's say the reason i have these medical bills is and then you're going to keep writing down the answers to that question. The reason I have these medical bills is blank, blah, 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 blah. The, the reason I have these medical bills is blah, 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 blah. And you keep, at, you, keep, you keep completing the sentence over and over and over again. And you don't edit. It's, it's just the first thought that comes to your mind, whether it makes sense or not. You don't try to figure it out. Don't worry if it's accurate. And you just keep going until you get to the bottom of the page or... In some cases, if you get the same answers over and over and it keeps kind of cycling around over and over again, then you can stop. But, but do your best to try to get to the bottom of the page. And then you're going to have a, a list of, um, of thoughts, of reasons. So the reason I have all these medical bills is because my, my mother didn't take care of me right when I was little. The reason I have all these medical bills is because I'm unhealthy. The reason I have all these medical bills is because I don't uh, have enough insurance. The reason I have all these medical bills is because I'm not organized enough. The reason I have all these medical bills is because I'm so bad with money. The reasons I have, all, you know, and until, until you get to the bottom of the page. One, then once you get to the bottom of that page... You're going to um, take another clean sheet of paper, and for each statement on your negative list, you're going to write a statement which is the exact opposite of each of the statements on that first list that you just created. For example, if your thought is, I'm really bad with money, the, 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 it would be, I'm really good with money. If Now, for if it's something like my mother was really a bad mother. You could say my mother was a really good mother, but probably the one that will work better is I forgive my mother. I know she did the best she could. So even though that's not quite an opposite one, it's probably going to hit it better than my mother was a good mother. Because you could you could repeat the phrase, my mother was a good mother until the cows come home. And if she really wasn't a good mother, it's not going to help you. So you're, you're going to have to be intelligent about how you you address these negative thoughts. If possible, try to just invert the statement. But if that doesn't work, then use a statement of forgiveness or something like that that's going to help you to address that thought. And so you're going to, on your new sheet of paper, you're going to, to one by one put a positive statement that completely negates the, the original statement on that other list. And so if you had 15 negative thoughts, you're going to have then 15 positive thoughts. And maybe you, there might be, and, and, and if this is the case, feel free, there may be three or four positive thoughts that come to your mind that negate the one, write them all down. So it's okay if you have more positive thoughts than negative. There's nothing wrong with that. So you're just going to keep going through that. Um, like, uh, like, like this example in your homework, if the, if the negative thought is I don't have enough education, you could say, I have the perfect amount of education to, re to achieve my goals rather than I have enough education. You, you want to just make, make sure that your, that your positive statement is not only a negation of the original statement, but is inclusive of what it is that you're 
uh, that you're trying to to address. So the reason why you might have said the re- uh, that I don't have enough education is that it was implying I don't have enough education to achieve my goals, or I don't have enough education to do what I want to do, or I don't have enough, you know. So if it's a simple statement like I don't have enough education, rather than just flipping the statement around to I have enough education, complete it and go a little bit farther so that it comes back to why you thought you didn't have enough education to begin with. So you're going to have to take a little time with this, okay? Um, it, it, it'll, it may take you 30 minutes, it may take you less, you know, but, but, but it's, it's something that you need to commit to for seven days. Please ju- just do it. Just, just do it. And once you get through all those thoughts and you've turned them around, then you can either tear up or burn the original list that you made with all the negative thoughts. The, uh, the reason I have, you know, this condition or whatever, you put whatever your your your, um, your your sentence was that you used. So you can either tear that up or burn it, but you're definitely going to destroy that. And then you're going to take a moment and just out loud read each statement one by one off of your new page of positive thoughts and just file that page away in your prosperity journal for the time being because you'll use it later at another at another day. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. That once a day, you're going to take a thought. I mean, I'm sorry, something that you're trying to eliminate from your elimination list. Go from the most important thing to the least important thing. Prioritize it however you want. But every day, you're going to take one thought, I mean, one, one item off of that list that you're trying to eliminate, and you're going to create a list of what you, what in your, in your uh, deep mind are reasons why this thing exists in your life. The reason I blah, blah, blah is, and you just keep repeating that statement over and over again, write down stream of consciousness f- n- without editing, no matter how weird it sounds, write down all those thoughts till you get to the bottom of the page. Then you're going to take another clean sheet of paper and you're going to respond to each of those thoughts one by one and either invert it into a, a positive opposite or somehow annihilate it with a new thought. Then you're going to either tear up or burn your original page with all the negative thoughts, read each thought out loud, and then file it away in your in your prosperity journal. Um, and it says this in your homework, but you, you, you want to light your prosperity candle before you do any of this. And you're going to do your orb of light and all that stuff first. Um, just as a rule of thumb, when you're doing your prosperity magic, start out with your orb of light meditation. You can either use the recording or you can um, do it on your own, however you want to do it. Just get that get get that st- that sacred space set before you do any any kind of magic, no matter what it is. And do use your prosperity candle if you are using a prosperity candle. Do use it for both waning and waxing magic when you're when you're dealing with money. Okay, so you're going to repeat that process every day for seven days. Each day you're going to use a new item on your list. You're not going to do the same item more than once in any single lunar cycle. So if you have seven different items, you'll do one item for seven days, one item each, I'm sorry, one item per day. And and you'll, it'll take seven days to get through that list, but you won't do uh, the difference between the waxing moon and the waning moon magic is on the waxing moon. We're taking one thing that you want and we're repeating it over and over and over again through the whole waxing cycle in this particular class. For the waning magic, you do not banish anything more than once in a, in, a, in a waning cycle. You do not banish it more than once. One time and that's it. You're done. Okay, once you've um, finished, um, so don't do more than one item per day and don't banish any, one, any item more than once in a lunar cycle. So just one item per day, no more, and don't repeat that same item in the same waning moon cycle, Okay. So after seven days, at least, you can take longer if you want, but after at least seven days, because I'm sure everybody's got seven things that they're trying to get rid of. And it, they can be big things, they can be little things, it doesn't matter. Just whatever you're trying to get rid of, whatever you're trying to eliminate. After you've, um, and, and if they don't all 
apply to money, that's fine. Just whatever you want to get rid of is fine. It doesn't matter because it all kind of it, it's all part of the same matrix of negative thinking anyway. Because what you're going to notice is after those seven days or more, you're going to notice when you go through all of those lists that you filed away that you've got very many similar positive thoughts that you've come up with. There's going to be at least one or two, if not more, thoughts that you've restated in a different way many different times. And you're going to take note of those thoughts. And you can even make a new list of those thoughts, especially, because you want to take the rest of the waning moon cycle and work these thoughts daily, out loud, with your candle burning, in the orb of light. So you can do them as just plain affirmations, or if you can, turn them into an incantation. To turn him, you, you could even do, you know, if, if, you're, if you're feeling really poetic, turn, him, turn all of those, those repetitive thoughts. So let's say that you've, you've got seven pieces of paper with a bunch of ne- uh, positive thoughts on them. And, and you notice that there's like one thought that's repeated like almost every day. Then that's one of them. You're, you'll probably see that there's several of those. You take all of those thoughts that seem to be repetitive over, this, o- over that time and turn them all, if you can, into a, your own incantation. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with rhyming and if you don't feel comfortable with, um, with uh, rhythm and all that stuff, then just read them as affirmations. That's fine. But read them out loud every single day. Once a day, like we did with the, with the, um, with the other chant. Okay? And um, I would recommend that you do that uh, staring at your prosperity symbol. All right? And so that's a, it's a really, it's a really important phase. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be letting go of some of the um, ties that bind you to poverty and, and um, things like that. And they don't all, the things on your, on your elimination list don't have to be tangible things. They can be like what um, I think it was Gypsy that was saying, you know, I've, I've discovered I have this pattern where in order for me to get what I want, I have to suffer. So what I'm going to eliminate is the need to suffer to get what I want. And then she's going to say, well, the reason why I think I need to suffer to get what I want is, and she's going to write a list of page, a page of a list of items um, on, on a page. The reason I think I have to suffer to get what I want is because um, I, I'm not good enough. The reason why I think I have to suffer to get what I want is because life is hard. The reason why I think I have to suffer to get what I want is because I'm not pretty enough. The reason I think I have to suffer to get what I want is because I'm too old. The, th- the reason I think I have to suffer to get what I want is because I'm a bad girl. Whatever whatever comes up, it's going to just, sometimes it's just going to be this weird stuff, you know, that comes out of nowhere that you, you're like, what? And don't worry about it. If, if it comes up, just write it down because it won't hurt you to flip that into something positive, even if you don't believe that you be- think that. It won't hurt you to turn that into something positive. Just just do it and don't edit it, okay? And you're going to do one item off that list uh, each day for seven days or more. So you'll get seven or more items done. Flip them around to a new positive uh, statement Find the find the the um, the most popular thoughts that you come up with over the, that seven days, and either just chant those popular thoughts every day um, uh, with your prosperity candle, and you can just do that like you were doing during the waxy moon, staring at your symbol, and or you can turn them into a rhyming incantation of your own if you'd like, and that that's a, a wonderful thing to do. But either way is fine. All right, so that's going to be your daily spell work for the next um, waning phase. So that'll be about just a little under two weeks, you know, with the, with the rest period. Any questions on that? Okay. So in addition to that, you'll, you'll be doing your, your daily morning and evening meditation still. Uh, even if you don't use the recording, you you probably know what basically what it's like. It takes one or two minutes max. So don't think, oh, this is taking so long. It does not. You're going to be sitting in bed like reading the internet anyway before you get up and when you get 
you know, before you go to bed. So, so just take one less minute off of your internet surfing time and do your morning and evening meditations and, and be done with it. Um, uh, do your prosperity orb uh, of light definitely before you do any spell work. And, um, and so you're going to be busy. So you'll be doing that once a day anyway, at least for the first um, first seven days. And then I, I would definitely do a spell every single day that you're doing work for the waning moon. Don't don't cheat yourself. Just keep it up. Keep it up. Now, if you miss a day, don't beat yourself up. It's no big deal. It's not that it's not going to work. It's just it's like it's like a boot camp kind of thing, you know. So do 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 the most you can do. For, for for the next couple weeks and uh, see what see what you you get you're probably going to get some pretty amazing results continue again with the daily um, manifestation lists and um, once you've done that for 28 straight days I would be surprised if it's not something you don't want to incorporate into just your your lifestyle sort of like you know brushing your hair and stuff like that, <laughs> because it really makes a difference. You, you start to be able to actually command more of, the, um, of what you want in your life. You're able to, to be more in command as, as far as what, what will and won't happen in your life, because you're, you're, you're making it a habit of like, well, there's six things a day that are going to happen no matter what, and either I will do them or it will be done by someone. And as you as you get used to that being true, it's not that much of a of an expansion to start um, feeling like you can do that with with pretty much everything to to an extent without getting you know ego maniacal, obviously. Okay, and you want to still work with your prosperity journal. You're going to um, just I just I usually work with my goals like almost every day, and and that doesn't mean that I just. You go crazy with them, but I'll I'll look at my be do have list, you know, and I'll 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 make at least one new entry, you know, in one of those every day. I'll, I might read through them a little bit and say, oh, you know what, I don't think I really want that one anymore, or that's not quite what I want. I want it this way, so I'll cross one of them out and I'll reword it, you know. And then after about a month or two, if I notice there's a lot of scratches and and, and uh, scratching out and and rewording, then I'll just I'll rewrite that list. And, and put it, you know, and put it in uh, my my book. So, you know, just a little teeny bit every day, work, just working with your goal lists will make a huge difference in your magic because your your deep mind gets saturated with these plans and ideas. It just starts to, to go to work for you and you don't have to, you don't have to think about it so much anymore. So do work with your goals every every day or you know several times a week at least. Do I mean it's your life, do what you want. I'm not telling you what to do, but I I would really you know encourage you to 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 stay proactive with your goals because if you're not going to be proactive with your goals, then what you're going to be is proactive for somebody else's goals. <laughs> One way or another, somebody's going to get what they want. It may as well be you, okay? So that's just how life works. And uh, also, uh, keep, keep making your you know daily entries as to what magic you do every day. And it can be literally, it can be a 30-second entry. Did, did my banishing spell whatever. Did, I, I banished the, I, 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 you know, I banished the corn on my left foot, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're working on that day. You know, just, it, uh, just the date, what you did basically is all it, you know, I usually put a symbol of the planetary symbol of the, of the day of the week, just cause that's how I, how, how I am, but you don't have to do that. And again, don't worry about the planets in this waning phase. You're just using the whole waning phase, um, of the moon. Don't worry about the planetary energies, and, and you can do this on. You can if if it starts on a Tuesday or a Saturday, that's fine for this for this waning stuff. It doesn't matter what day you start on. Just try to start on like like a day or two after the full moon. That's all that matters. Okay. Um. Now and also, don't worry about the um. Your manifestation list. Don't worry about. You, you, you can still do that during the, the dark moon and stuff like that or, or eclipses. That's not really a piece of magic in, in, in the sense of uh, raising and directing energy. It's just it's uh, focusing your mind. So there's nothing wrong with that. 
Okay, let's see. Also, you want to continue to make entries in your journal of uh, financial and other blessings that you receive each day. And I have just a whole section for that in my journal that's, you know, the gratitude section or blessings or whatever you want to call it. And it's good. Whenever you're feeling down, just read over that list and you think, wow, okay, it's not so bad. (laughs) Life's pretty good. And not only that, the more you focus on, on the blessings that you're having, the more your mind gets, your deep mind gets gets acclimated toward that phase because your deep mind doesn't have the ability to choose. That's what our conscious mind does. And so basically what you choose to think about with your conscious mind is what your deep mind starts to think, it starts to um, look at it as a command. So if you keep your mind focused on what you want your deep mind tends to tends to gather evidence to support what it is that you're focusing on for you over time and it's it's again it's over time it's it's what what you're habitually focusing on is what your your deep mind will start habitually focusing on it's um the the um it's the both the law of cause and effect and the law of correspondence from the hermetic principles as above so below as the conscious mind so the deep mind Okay, so you got to do your best. Again, you don't have to get superstitious about it, but do your best to, to focus your mind on what you want rather than on your problems, because then your your deep mind will start focusing on what you want rather than giving you more problems, for the most part. Again, there's... You know, it's this is the this is the real world we live in, we live in a, in the physical world. Everybody's going to have problems, and problems are actually blessings uh, too, because they are. If you think about problems as assignments, um, then your deep mind can help you to solve those problems, to solve those assignments, and you, that's how we grow. That's how we grow, and the desires that we have are actually there for us to grow. So think about. Think about that. You know, our what we want, what our deep desires are in our minds, are our own spirit trying to express itself. And if you deny your desires, then you're not really doing what you came here to do. What you, what you're what you're what you set up for yourself to do. So if you can really focus on 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 putting putting your energies toward what it is that you want to be, do, and have in this life, you're actually. Um, doing something that's that's spiritually um, uplifting to you. You're actually growing spiritually. Um, it's not. It's not. It's very important to realize that it's not. Well, do I want what I want, or do I want to grow spiritually? Actually, it's you can't grow spiritually unless you unless you fulfill the desires that you came in here to fulfill. The reason why you want money is not so that you can be materialistic. You know, there's that's that's not that's not why people get into magic is to well some people do but that's not why we're here. We're not here so that we can be materialistic and just money for money's sake. No, what we're doing is we're actually trying to be prosperous, and being prosperous and being materialistic are actually polar opposites of one another. You're not trying to be materialistic. You're actually trying to be abundant. You're trying to be prosperous. Because the more you focus on what you don't have, actually the more materialistic you're being. Does that make sense? If you're if you're worrying about your bills day in and day out, you're being very focused on the materialistic world. Whereas if you're focused on abundance, if you're focused on 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 what you want to be, do, and have in this life, you're actually working on a uh, on 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 a level of joy and and a level of joy is not being materialistic meaning materialism for its own sake it's using the material world world for what it was here to be used for and that is to fulfill your purpose so your desires are there to be fulfilled so don't think that, that okay. there's something also, selfish um, in this unspiritual phase about going after to, what you want. Um, it's not selfish. Continue it's to actually work fulfilling with your the power destiny. of so 10 and the giveaway. It's especially effective during this waning phase because it's, it's going to build up more prosperous energy to help bust out those negative thought forms. So again, if you, if you, if when you're doing, um, going about your day, think in terms of the number 10, you know, if you get a bill, remember to 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 times that by ten as the amount of money that's coming back your way. If you look in your bank account and you see a hundred dollars, you say, "Up, oh, thousand dollars is coming my way." No matter what it is, times it by ten, and that's how much money is coming. Just keep that going. 
It may take a while before you really start seeing the manifestation of it, but it's just like going to the gym. If you don't do it, you won't see it. But if you do it, you will start seeing those muscles. You will start You will start losing that weight. You will start feeling better. You will start having a, a healthier body, right? Same thing with this. If you do it every day and, 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 and you bec- it becomes a habit, you're going to notice that you become much, much, much more abundant. So continue on that during the waning moon as well because you want that extra prosperous energy to bust open those negative thought forms. You want you want those to be dispersed. And also, this is a great reason for the giveaway. Um, people that have a lot of debts and things like that, um, those are the people that benefit the fastest usually from doing some sort of um, giving of, of their money because they think they can't afford it. So that what that does is it tells your deep mind, oh, we're prosperous, we're giving away. And it's plugging you in. It's spiritualizing your money. So think about, you know, think about what you can give financially. Somebody asks, oh, can, if we can't give money, can we give time? Well, of course you can. You can give anything you want. But what do you want more of? Do you want more money or do you want more time? I mean, I give both. I, give a, I volunteer a lot of my time. But I also, I also give away my money because I want money too. I want both. I want, to have, I want to have more time to do what I want to do. And that's why I give away some of my time. And, but you, that only works if you claim it. You can't just give away, you know, you can't just give it away. And it's like, like planting a seed and not watering it. You've got to claim it. So if you're giving your time because you want more time, then say, I am now going to have more time to do what I want as a result of this. And if you're giving your money, then you claim that tenfold return on that. Because remember, the God is on the left on the, uh, as, as the number one, and the goddess is on the right as the, num- as the number zero. And together, that is the power, magical number of increase. It is the, 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 the male and female principle working together. Now, obviously, the, the God, as the, if you think about the sun, the God, there's, the, the God can fertilize many different many different manifestations of the goddess. So you can keep adding zeros <laughs> eventually, but just stick with 10 for now. Okay, just keep sticking with 10 for now and keep that idea of if you have, um, if you have a lot of debts and a lot of bills, then there's probably your tendency is to hang on to every last little dollar and think, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, I can't afford it. Well, that's usually when you can't afford not to give some money away to somebody or to some organization. And and really think about it. Really get into meditation and ask, you know, whatever your whatever you um whatever your relationship with spirit is, whether it's the goddess, whether it's god and goddess, um whether it's just the great spirit, whether it's God, whatever your thing is, is fine because it, it doesn't really matter because it really transcends all, all labels. Just sit down and ask, where is my tithe? Where is my, I, I, I call it a tithe just out of habit, but I really prefer the word giveaway. Where is my giveaway best given? Is it, um, you know, where, where, do, where should I give it? And I, when I'm, especially when I'm doing it for increase, I don't give it to people who need it. I will give to charity. I don't, I, I, I give a lot of money away. I do give to charity, but my sacred money, my sacred giveaway, I usually give to a teacher of mine or I usually get, it sounds like I'm asking you to give me money and I'm not, I promise you, you don't have to. <laughs> I promise. God, I'm so, I'm so paranoid about that because I, I never want to come across as one of those people that, that's telling you to give me money because I, I, I'm not telling you to do that. It's, it's, um, but I'll, every, it can change from day to day for me. And I'll, I'll just, like, if I get, you know, you know $1,500 one day, I'll think, okay, now I've got $150 that I want to just give away. I want to give it away right now so I can claim another $1,500. And I just say, where, where is this best given? And sometimes I'll give it to one of my teachers. Sometimes I'll give it to an environmental cause. Sometimes I'll give it to, you know, wherever I'm led to give it, but not usually to a homeless person. Not that I don't ever give money to homeless people, but not, not usually to a homeless person, not to a relative who's in, uh, going through hard times. That's not where I give my money. I will give it to some place where I really feel is, is plugging me into my own spiritual um, 
source. And that can, like I said, that can change from day to day. I don't have, I don't have one place that, that gets my money. Um, I have about four, actually, that, that get my money. But then, I mean, I'll, I'll think about other things, too. All right. So play with that. And then we talked about your daily spell work. Okay, any questions so far about any of this stuff? Oh, somebody asked about giving without strings attached. That you can claim, claiming your tenfold return is not a string. Okay? Claiming your tenfold return is not a string. That is, it's, you're plugged into abundance. So you are, you, you are actually claiming your harvest, right? You plant the seed and you're claiming your harvest. Giving with strings attached is saying, I'm giving you this money, but I only want you to spend it on this. Or, or I'm giving you this money, but um, I, I want you to prove to me that you're worthy. I'm giving you this money, but and, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna really keep an eye on you. It's like if you if you give somebody a shirt, and every time you see them, you're wondering if they're why they're not wearing your shirt that you gave them. Then you didn't really give them the shirt because it's really it's not none of your business whether they wear the shirt or not. You just gave it to them freely because you wanted them to have it, not because you expected something from them. And that's what we say when you when you give your giveaway, you're giving it freely, and you're expecting nothing in return from them. You're expecting something in return from the universe. You're not expecting them to do a specific thing with it. You're not expecting anything out of it. You've given it freely. It's a true gift. That's what no strings attached means. It doesn't mean that you can't claim your your return. That's totally not a string. 